This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got a delightful matchup on tap for Super Bowl 58 as the Kansas City Chiefs take on the San Francisco 49ers. It is playoff Pat Mahomes taking on Kyle Shanahan and the Death Star that is the Niners offense. And I couldn't be more pumped up for this game. Now, it's a bummer for the Ravens and Lions fans because those two teams were awesome this year. And had a couple of things gone their way, may have had themselves in the same spot as well. But these two teams, Mahomes versus Purdy and all those Niners guys, is going to be a lot of fun to break down. For today, we're going to give my first look at this matchup, let you know what my numbers say about the spread and the total, and let you know where I see value at FanDuel Sportsbook. And as a teaser, I do see value in both the side and total for this matchup. So let's dig in and get you ready for our first look at Super Bowl 58. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Here to give my first look at Super Bowl 58 between the Chiefs and the Niners. Let you know where I see value based on the opening lines over at FanDuel Sports. But we'll dig into all that here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. In addition to this first look for today, we're going to have a full week of Super Bowl coverage next week here on the show. Monday through Friday, talking everything from... We're going to talk live betting. We're going to talk same game parlays. We're going to break down matchups, player props, whatever it may be. Everything to get you ready for this game will be in this feed next week, Monday through Friday. So make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread to get those as they go live. For the rest of this week, we're talking college basketball. We're talking some NBA, NHL uh, in the all-star break there. EPL coming up as well. And of course, the Bush Light Clash from a NASCAR perspective for me, all right here in the same feed. So go search for the Covering the Spread podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And you can also check out the show on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. Happy Super Bowl to all of us celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some bets. FanDuel has so many ways to end the season with a W or a two or a three. Not only can you bet on who will win Super Bowl 58, but FanDuel also has bets for which players will score a touchdown, how many points will be scored, and so much more. New customers join today. You'll get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports book sports betting partner of the NFL must be 21 plus and present in select states. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas star casino, LLC $10 first deposit required bonus issued as non withdrawable bonus bets, which expires seven days after a seat. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com gambling problem. Call 1-800 gambler or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Virginia, and Vermont. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit M D Gambling Health at Oregon, Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit GamblingHelplineMA.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text OPEN-Y in New York. Let's dig in now to the 49ers versus the Chiefs over at FanDuel Sportsbook for Super Bowl 58. And this has been a fascinating game to track from a betting perspective since things opened yesterday. The look-ahead line was the 49ers minus three, and the total was 47. That reopened during the Chiefs-Ravens game yesterday at the uh, at three. So it was the 49ers minus three at that time. It stayed there for a bit, but when it reopened during the Niners-Lions game, it was a two and a half. Then it went to two, and then it went all the way down to one. 
It did briefly get back to two and a half, but it has since settled in at the Niners minus one and a half, and it's held there overnight. So it looks like that's where our consensus line will be to start, is the 49ers minus one and a half. There are some ones out there. So overall, there has been a lot of interest in the Chiefs side in this game. If you look here at uh, FanDuel Sportsbook, you'll see that 70% of bets are on the Chiefs, and 78% of the money on the spread is on the Chiefs as well. So again, a lot of interest in the Chiefs from the betting public in this game. Let's dig into what my numbers say about this one. After including yesterday's games, the 49ers are still, by a wide margin, the best team and the best offense in football. Again, just by my personal numbers, numbers are not everything. They did us some very good luck yesterday. Uh, balls bouncing off guys' faces, stuff like that. And there were some issues. But the overall efficiency numbers for the Niners, once again, were really, really good. If I were to make no adjustments on the Chiefs and their offense, they would rank eighth in my offensive power rankings as it stands right now. But obviously, our eyes tell us that's not that's not good. That is not an accurate representation of this offense because in part, it does include week 18 when they sat a lot of guys and that's going to get tossed out regardless. So toss out week 18. But then we've also seen this offense really click during the playoffs. Patrick Mahomes is a 0.24 passing net expected points per dropback during the playoffs. League average during the regular season was 0.08, and Mahomes was a 0.10 during the regular season himself as well. So it's very clear the Chiefs offense has figured things out as things have gone along, and I do think that's a more relevant sample. And as a result, we need to give the Chiefs offense a manual bump up to account for the fact that they're just a better team right now than they were back in week 10. I guess they're on a bye week 10, week 11 or whatever it may be. They're a better team now than they were, and we have to give them a bump up. I just can't justify not giving the Chiefs a bump up with how they've looked through three postseason games. The defense is also really good for the Chiefs, and I think they're actually better than the Niners. My numbers of the Chiefs as the fifth-ranked defense when you include the playoffs, whereas the Niners are 10th. And the Niners are especially struggling against the run. A lot of times that doesn't matter because they'll get a 10-point lead and you can't run the ball at that time. So this is a defense that has struggled against the run, but now you're putting them in a neutral script where a team can afford to run the ball deeper in the game. and that's going to cause more issues for them than they typically see. So the Chiefs offense gets a bump up and their defense is potentially, at least by my numbers, better than the Niners. As a result, I understand why the betting public is so high on the Chiefs in this game. And why would you want Mahomes to be an underdog once again? So I get it. I just can't get my numbers to align with it, even with those adjustments we were discussing. For that reason, I am on the 49ers for this game. It sucks to bet against Patrick Mahomes. I do not enjoy that. I did that uh, and having the Ravens money line yesterday. So it stinks. When you watch Mahomes and you bet against him, you ask yourself, what on earth was I thinking? And when you watch the Niners at times on Sunday, you ask yourself why I would bet them specifically against Mahomes as well. I just think this offense is too good for the Niners right now. The Chiefs are a strong team against outside wide receivers, and that's fine because you can slow Brandon Ayuk down if you want to. But the 49ers still have Debo Samuel, George Kittle, and Christian McCaffrey. They have answers where the Chiefs are strongest, and they can exploit the Chiefs' weakness against the rush. Now, it's not as big of a thing during the playoffs. Chris Jones is going to push for all four quarters, whereas he may not during the regular season. You see a different level to Chris Jones against the run than you may at other times during the year. But my model is much closer to where the market opened with the Niners minus three than where it is right now with the Niners minus one and a half. So as terrifying as it is to bet against Patrick Mahomes, once again, I think we do need to do it based on what the market is saying right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. The question is, do you go with the spread or the money lines? Let's kind of talk through that decision here because uh, the spread is minus one and a half at minus 106 at FanDuel Sportsbook, and the money line is minus 118. So the implied odds at minus 106 are 51.5% versus 54.1% implied at minus 118. I know I'm not asking you to do math. I'll do the math for you. I'm just asking it, laying out the numbers here and kind of going through the thought process of 
do I go spread versus money line? I'd actually apply the same thought process to the Chiefs. You want to bet the Chiefs? I go through the same kind of exercise to decide if you want to take even money on the money line or take the plus one and a half for them, which is minus 114 right now. It's the gap between the the implied numbers for the Niners spread and their money line is 2.67 percentage points. So in order to take the money line, you would need to say the game lands on one point where the Niners win by exactly one more than 2.67% of the time. Overall, games land on one uh, just about 4% of the time. It's a bit north of that, but only about half of those times would be a win for the Niners because the Chiefs can also win by one point. So we're pretty close to 2.67 once you make those adjustments. And that could say just lay the minus one and a half and lay the minus one of six there. But when I look at my model specifically, when I have teams that are favored by roughly the same amount as the Niners are in my model, They've actually won by exactly one point, 3.6% of the time. That's an 83 team sample. So it's pretty small, but that methodology would indicate that it's better to take the money line than lay the points. As a result, that is how I'm going to play things right now. And I'm going to go with the money line person. I'm going to take the Niners money line at minus 118 instead of the spread here. I am paying minus 118 instead of minus 106 to lay the one and a half. But to me... That's a good trade-off, given the non-zero odds that the Niners do win this game by exactly one point. If you agree with that and you want to lay the one and a half, that's more than defensible. I'm kind of splitting hairs here between one or the other, but that's where I land. And I'm also not going to fight anybody who wants to say, you know, I'm going to bet Mahomes even money to win this game. And you want to bet the Chiefs? I can't fight back against that. I think it's a very fine, justifiable thing. But if you're going to bet the Chiefs, I would also go through, the, again, the same thought process of should I take the money line to even money or the plus one and a half at minus 114. So for me, I'm taking the Niners money line minus 118. What could possibly go wrong betting against Patrick Mahomes in the playoffs? I feel dumb already, but I've been wrong a lot in my life and I'm very comfortable being wrong potentially once again. As far as the total in this game, I do show value in the over, and it's actually a pretty good amount of value with where things stand right now. I have this total of 49.97, and it's at 47 and a half right now at FanDuel Sportsbook. Now, 47 is a key number, so I wish I could get a push on 47, but I think we're more likely to see this market move to 48, move up, than down to 47. And I've got a good amount of cushion with my model having this at 49.97. The reasoning here is that neither defense is elite. They're both very good. You know, they're both top 10 again by my numbers, but neither is elite. And both offenses can move the football at an efficient clip. And I think that they have answers to what the opposing defense does best. My models recommended more unders than overs so far this year. The exception has been with 49ers games, but that worked again yesterday. So I understand why it's here again. And it does kind of work as a hedge too, where if Mahomes goes for three, four or 350 yards and four touchdowns, I can at least benefit from it in terms of the total. So I'm not betting it because the hedge against the, 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 the money line here, but it does help at least a bit where I can at least take some solace. If Mahomes really does shred in this game, it probably does benefit at least my over here. So I think the over 47 and a half by my numbers, but also by my rooting interest, my very selfish rooting interest here. Both those align to make the over 47 and a half a quality bet, at least based on what my model is saying. Between the two, I feel better about the total, honestly. In this market, again, I get to root for Mahomes rather than against him. So if you were to take just one of these bets, I would go towards the over versus the 49ers money line. But I do believe in my model. I believe in the process behind it. I can back test it and see how well it's performed and know in general it's going to serve me pretty well to have faith in what the model has said. So personally, I am going to ride it both. I'll take the Niners money line at minus 118. And then we'll take the over at minus 110. It's going to be a blast to talk about this game for the next two weeks. And I hope it's equally fun to watch as well. But again, we're going to have a lot of shows to dissect this game. A lot of shows to dissect what to expect in this one. Different ways to bet it. Again, we're going to have a live betting show. Like not during the game, but like things to look out for for live betting in general. By talking to Ed Miller. Uh, he has literally built live betting models. Uh, wrote a book, a couple books about it. The Logic of Sports Betting Interception. We'll talk to Ed uh, next week on Friday to get his thoughts on some live betting stuff for this game. We'll also talk 
I'm going to break down correlated same game parlays at FanDuel Sportsbook. Uh, some, some of those that stand out to me. We'll have some other prop betting shows. We'll get Dr. Ed Fang in here to break down his thoughts on the game. All that coming up next week here on the show. So a lot of time left to break down what should be a very fun game. Before we close up for today, though, got to go back through recommendations from last week here on the show, beginning with the aforementioned Dr. Ed Fang. You can find him on Twitter at the Power Rank and find his work at thepowerrank.com. Ed's one bet for this week was for Patrick Mahomes to not throw a pick at plus 104 at FanDuel Sportsbook, and that did, in fact, wind up hitting because Mahomes was clean, as he always is. Don't even think he had a lot of risky passes in that game. So Mahomes under. 0.5 interceptions, good call by Ed to get the win there. We had JJ Zacharyson on talking some player props for both of these games. Find JJ on Twitter at Late Round QB. Find his work at LateRound.com and the Late Round Fantasy Football Podcast. First one for JJ was Mark Andrews. Kind of thinking about it in two ways, where if Andrews is limited, he'll go under 35 and a half. And if he's not limited, we could look at some alt numbers. So JJ liked under 35 and a half and minus 110, and then over 50 at plus 178, potentially to lead him for Andrews to lead in receiving at plus 2,800. Under hit here because Andrews was not involved early. I thought this was actually a good example of a spot to, to live bet some player props. Andrews didn't play in the first series. First three snaps, he was not out there. So you could get him a 26 and a half receiving yards on that first after that first drive. I took the under there, finished with 19. That's the kind of stuff you want to look for in spots like this, where a guy is banged up, don't really know what his role will be. If he's not playing snaps early on, that's a spot where it's a good spot to grab a live under because they do have live player props up at a lot of spots at this point. Uh, JJ had Lamar over 10 and a half rush attempts, minus 115. He finished with eight, uh, so didn't get that one. He was really effective when he did run, but just didn't run it a ton, unfortunately. Isaiah Pacheco, over 63 and a half rushing yards, minus 110. JJ had that, and that hit. Pacheco, I think, had about 68 or 69 or so, somewhere in there. JJ had Justice Hill over 12 and a half receiving yards. Uh, that one hit as well. Hill had a good amount of receiving work in this game. He also had a Justice Hill touchdown at 3-1, to one, and he did not hit there. In the Niners versus Lions game, two and two for JJ. He had McCaffrey over 35 and a half receiving yards. McCaffrey did hit that. And he also had David Montgomery over five and a half receiving yards, which was a hit. I think he had about 20 in that game. Other ones were Jameer Gibbs over 22 and a half receiving yards, which was a miss. And then Juwan Jennings long shot Tud at plus 350. And Jennings did not score. Didn't know if Debo would go at that time, but he did. Uh, so overall, about a, a break-even week for JJ for the recommendations there. Again, find JJ on Twitter at Late Round QB and check him out at the Late Round Fantasy Football Podcast. One in one week for me, I had the Ravens and Niners parlayed to win at plus 110. That closed at minus 115, so a lot of movement in my favor, but didn't hit, so who cares? Uh, I cannot feed my family on CLV, so... Um, and honestly, like CLV can be a tad bit overrated, especially when you're betting on favorites. So uh, I, it doesn't matter. It was a loss. Uh, and with the way the Chiefs played, I deserve to lose that game. So I deserve to lose that one. It is what it is. The hit was on the 49ers and Lions over 50 and a half minus 115. They uh, were tied 24-24. And the thought did creep in my head. If this game wins with a safety, I would lose because it land on 50, but you know, it doesn't land a 50 very often. So uh, that was the conspiracy theory brain or the, the worry, the worrying part of my brain was a bit worried about that, but over hit there finished with 65 total points in that game, 34, 31. So one in one week for me, we'll see if we can get a, a winner to close things out here uh, with the Super Bowl 58 read. That's all we got here for today on Covering the Spread. Tomorrow we're talking some college basketball. John Rothstein, haven't had John on the show yet this year. We'll get a little catch up on how things have gone across college basketball for this year if you're, if you're trying to bet that. We have NHL coming up this week, NBA. We've got some EPL, UFC, NASCAR all on the show. And then, of course, leading hard into Super Bowl 58 next week. Make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. And you can also find us on the FanDuel YouTube page and FanDuel TV+. Plus. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonis. You can find me on threads at Jim.Sonis. And you can find FanDuel Research on Twitter at FanDuel Research. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you. If you're betting anything across Monday, we'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down some college basketball with John Rothstein. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 